Are you interested in building your own shipping container home? In this video, you're gonna learn the initial steps in the construction process as it relates to shipping container homes. We're gonna be going over what type of containers you should be purchasing, how to do the cutouts for your doors and windows, and how to make sure you structurally reinforce those properly. The first step in building your container home is getting your containers. Containers come in a variety of sizes and conditions. The most common size containers come in are 20 foot and 40 foot sizes. However, most container vendors will also have options for 10 foot and 45 foot units. When it comes to the condition of your container, there are a few different options as well. You can find units that are over eight years old, that may have some dents that go for pretty cheap, or you can find newer ones. For homes, we usually recommend one-trip shipping containers. These are containers that have been shipped overseas one time, here to the United States, and they're in great condition. They're typically a little bit more expensive, but for a home, it's worth the difference. You'll also wanna look for a high cube shipping container. These are containers that are nine foot six in height, which makes them one foot taller than standard containers. Because you're creating a home, having the extra foot of ceiling space will be really nice. When you purchase your container, you can often work it out for the vendor to assist with the shipping as well. The cheapest location to purchase containers is typically near a major port since that's where they get shipped to. For us, we're based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and the nearest port is Long Beach, California. So I'd recommend contacting whichever port is closest to you and begin getting quotes for your shipping container. Pricing for containers will fluctuate based on supply and demand. Depending on whether if there's a surplus or a shortage for the containers you're looking for, the price can vary significantly. For example, in early 2020, you could purchase a 20 foot one trip high cube container for about $3,000. And in 2021, the price has risen to about $4,300. This is similar for 40 foot containers as well. They used to be around 4,200. And in 2021, they rose to about 6,500. We're expecting these prices to go down towards the end of 2021. Once you've ordered your container, there are usually two types of trailers they will deliver your container on, either a flatbed trailer or a tilt bed trailer. If you purchase your container from someone locally, you'll wanna request a tilt bed trailer for easy offload. If you've ordered your container from a port that is far from your actual property, a flatbed trailer may be okay to use since the cost per mile is much less. The only thing is if you go with a flatbed trailer, it will require having a crane to offload. Once you get your container, it's time to start construction. The first thing we do when we get a container is we get it leveled. This is essential for everything else that you're gonna be doing. Next, we go through the container and we remove all the stickers. To remove the stickers on new containers, it's pretty easy. You can just basically pull them up, but for older containers, it may require scraping them off. After that's completed, we'll then examine the container for any rust. It's important to properly remove rust from the container exterior, which can be done with a grinding pad and then applying a rust primer. The rust primer will help to properly seal the metal, preventing further rust from taking place. There are two ways that you can check for this. First, you can go in the container and see if you see any light coming in from the outside. Next, we recommend doing a water test where you spray the roof down with a hose and see if any water finds its way in. If you find any holes that need to be patched, we recommend welding in a piece of metal as a patch. Once your exterior has been properly examined and treated, you can shift your attention to the interior. If you purchase a used container, it'll be important to put a layer of epoxy on the floors in order to seal them. This is gonna help to prevent any toxins that the container may have been treated with during production from affecting your home. With newer containers, you can have more confidence that the products used to treat the floors are not as harmful, but still we recommend putting an epoxy on the floor as well. After you've completed the epoxy on the floors, you're now ready for the cutouts and the reinforcements. This means it's time to start measuring out where your doors and your windows are gonna be going. We'll typically draw out our cut lines directly on the container for the doors and windows. Once we have them mapped out, we'll do a general walkthrough before cutting just to make sure everything looks good and feels right. Remember, when you're doing your cutouts, you're gonna to wanna to account for reinforcements, otherwise known as steel frames that will go around your doors and your windows also. For example, if you have a window that has a rough opening of 48 inches by 48 inches, and you are going to frame it out with two by two steel, then you're gonna to need to make a cutout that is 52 inches by 52 inches 
which accounts for the steel as well as the RO of the window. For cutouts, it's most common to use a grinder with a small grinding disc. These can be purchased from your local hardware store. You can get them from somewhere like Harbor Freight for as low as $40, or you can get a better quality one for around $150. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to wear all the proper gear while you're doing your cutouts as well, as this is one of the more dangerous steps in the build process. This is gonna include you having your guard on your grinder, having some safety glasses, some heavier duty gloves, earplugs, and I'd recommend wearing a long sleeve shirt and some pants. After you've completed all of your cutouts, it's time to install your steel reinforcements. We'll typically use two by three tube steel for our reinforcements. For those of you that are doing a permitted build, you're gonna to need to follow the exact details that the structural engineer has provided in his drawings. This may mean using larger tube steel and possibly installing the windows as H frames where the left and right sides of the window structural supports will need to connect from the top to the bottom of the shipping container. If H frames are required, we'll typically weld the steel pieces individually onto the container. If H frames aren't required, then we'll typically pre-make our window frames and door frames and have them installed. This helps us to ensure that they're square and makes the process of constructing them a lot quicker since you can have them laid out on a flat surface or even on a jig. If you don't have experience working with steel or haven't used a welder, I would recommend contacting someone who has experience and hiring them for this portion of the build. Having a professional come in to install the steel frames may cost you around $1,000 to $2,000, but it's also gonna ensure that everything structural is done correctly. Once the steel frames are installed, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is clean up the welds and make sure everything is properly sealed around your steel frames. If you chose to do full welds on your steel frames, this process is gonna be a lot easier, but for those of you who chose to stitch weld the frames onto the container, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you seal the frames from the interior as well as the exterior to make sure that they're completely watertight. If you won't be painting the exterior for a little bit of time, you're also gonna to wanna to go ahead and prime the steel frames at this point so that no rust develops on them. Well, that concludes this video. If you wanna learn more about building shipping container homes, go ahead and click the link in the description below to download our free container home guide. In the guide, I go over the five common mistakes people make when building their own shipping container home and how you can make sure that your home is gonna be a success. I appreciate you checking out this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.